next is Temple and head coach Jeff Collins. Uh, Temple is 2-3 and three overall, 1-0 in the American Athletic Conference. The Owls were in action Saturday at Boston College. Uh, BC won the game 45-35. to 35. Uh, Temple is back at home on Saturday to face ECU in an East Division matchup. The game will be at noon Eastern time on ESPN News. Uh, Coach, thanks so much for joining us on the call today. If you could uh, take a minute to tie up the game up at uh, Chestnut Hill, uh, what you expect to see as you're back at home on Saturday to face uh, ECU, please. Uh, yeah, it was a very hard-fought game. Uh, our guys came out and uh, uh, played a physical game, played all the way through to the very end, uh, had some self-inflicted um, things that hurt us um, with some penalties and some inopportune uh, times, um, and then some, you know, a couple turnovers that, that affected the game, especially the last five minutes of the first half. That's kind of when the game uh, changed for so. Um, got to work to correct those things, uh, continue to play with the great effort, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, great physicality that we always do, um, and clean up some of the, uh, some of the mistakes um, that, that hurt us on Saturday. We'll take questions for Coach Collins, please. Star one on your telephone keypad will put you in the queue, then the operator will introduce you. We'll, we'll go to Mark Narducci with Philadelphia Inquirer Daily News. Hey, hey, Jeff. Hey, um, you We had talked about the drop passes. How how many did you guys compute that that you guys had the other day? Seven. We made and we made a big deal about them last night. You know, again, they were um, at some inopportune times. One of them uh, even led to a uh, to the first uh, interception. Um, you know, that kind of got the momentum flipped around for them because I thought we were doing a good job controlling the game. Uh, you know, we had the lead. We were up 21-13 with, with five minutes left in the uh, first half. And, uh, you know, an unfortunate uh, interception off of a drop, um, you know, led to a sudden change situation, uh, you know, that they, you know, took advantage of and they ended up getting the uh, two-point conversion on a busted coverage. Um, so the kind of things that happen in a game, uh, you know, A, we want to catch every ball. B, we don't let them want to let the uh, drops end up being picks. Um, and then when we do get in a sudden change situation, uh, we have to get the stop. Um, and none of those three things happened uh, heading into heading into halftime, and it, it affected the uh, affected the game. But one thing, how tough has this been? Because that, that's been one of the strengths of your team, your receiving core. And the, the last couple weeks, and then there have been other games, too, where this has happened. It's not like they're not working to try to catch the ball. Do you, do you have an explanation? No, it's just something we continue to stress, continue to work on. Um, you know, our receivers stay out to practice, and they're on the jugs. Um, you know, and if they miss, you know, drops during the uh, during practice, um, you know, they have a, a player instituted policy where uh, they do push ups and then they are mandatory on the jugs after practice for any drops. Um, so they're working to correct it. Um, and again, the Maryland game, we had zero drops, um, you know, scored 35 points. So, um, you know, it's a focus, it's an emphasis, um, but we stick with, you know, uh, believing in our guys and keep, you know, throwing the ball around like we do. Thank you. We'll go to Tom Shanahan with the News and Observer, Raleigh, North Carolina. Hi, Coach. Hey, I don't know if you watched uh, much of East Carolina's the A&T game that they lost, but there was a lot of doom and gloom around here after that performance. And then since then, they've had uh, three pretty impressive games. I'm just wondering uh, what differences you see in the in the, the team. Right. I mean, I think, you know, they're playing uh, really hard, uh, really physical, um, you know, they're doing a nice job both offensively and defensively. Um, and then again, on special teams, uh, you know, the, the kickoff, uh, the place kick on the kickoff is, you know, consistently banging them through the end zone. Uh, but you still see uh, the kickoff team for ECU running down the field really, really hard, um, you know, and playing at a, playing at a high level. So, um, you know, we understand we've got a, a huge challenge. Um, coming up on Saturday versus a very good team that you know has a lot of talented players on both sides of the ball and are very well coached. And then uh, Trayvon Brown has been drawing a lot of more uh, double teams and even triple coverage than a year ago. Uh, what do you see in a guy like that? Why, why does he have to be doubled the way he is? What makes him so good? 
Sure. I mean, you know, as obviously, you know, they with the what, how well they've been running the ball. Um, you know, he's in a lot of one-on-one situations, and uh, you know, he's been able to go up and get the ball and uh, make some really nice plays. Um, you know, very, uh, very uh, detailed route runner, uh, but extremely athletic, very fast, and when the ball's in the air, um, you know, he goes and fights for it. So. Um, and I think I've been impressed, um, you know, with the, the entire receiving core um, and, you know, all the quarterbacks that have played have come in and moved the offense uh, and done a nice job. Thanks, Coach. Matt Vender with com has our next question. Hey, hey Matt. Matt. Uh, so, Good. first of all, just want to ask you, after getting a chance to, to watch the film, uh, the Boston College film again, um, what, what are your thoughts on the way the offensive line played, especially in pass protection? It seems like um, they, they gave up – they didn't give up a sack at all um, in the first two games Russo started, and, and Russo maybe got hit a little bit more um, on Saturday. So how do you think the offensive line held up? I uh, thought they were out there competing um, very hard. You know, that, that defensive line is as good as any there is in college football. You know, they lead the country in sacks. Um, you know, so – uh, obviously, we don't want to give up any, um, and obviously, you don't want to give up a cause fumble with, you know, with a sack. Um, but I thought they did a good job competing against a really, really talented defensive line. Um, Adam Klein is a true freshman out there playing uh, the entire game. Isaac Moore came in, another true freshman, uh, competing against that defensive line. Um, and I was just, I was really proud of the way they ran the ball. Um, and then in the past situations, obviously, we gave up some pressure. But they were battling, they were competing, and, uh, you know, I, I, I was proud of the way the guys fought and the way the guys played. Now, obviously, you've been without your, your, your regular starting right tackle, uh, James McHale, the last two games. Any chance you, you guys get him back this week? We're hoping so. He did much more last night, uh, so we're hoping to get him back and get him into the rotation. The thing that makes, uh, you know, Jimmy so, so valuable to us is he can play every position on the line. And that helps the rotation, you know, a great deal. Um, you know, we didn't have as much rotation Saturday against a really good defensive line. Um, and I thought maybe toward the end of the game got wore down a little bit, um, but the guys kept battling, kept fighting. Um, so anytime we can get uh, Jimmy back and get him more into the rotation, um, it make it elevates everybody's play uh, along the line. And it looked like Jeremy Jennings made the trip, but but didn't end up dressing. Is 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 that a is that a long term thing, or, or do you expect to have him back soon? We're we're hoping we're hoping it's we're hoping it's not a long term thing. Um, you know, hopefully it's more day to day. But um, we wanted to make sure that he was on the trip to you know speed his recovery so that he could get uh, treatment throughout the entire weekend. Uh, the same thing with Roger Cancy. You know, brought him so that he could be with our training staff who do an outstanding job. Uh, with the care of our players, and uh, so we want to make sure that that those guys were around, you know, our trainers for the entire weekend. All right, thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Thanks, bud. We'll go to Sean Pastor with Al's Daily. Hey, Sean. Hey, Jeff. Um, I wanted to follow up again about ECU. You know, last year I think they were pretty much dead last in the country in defense and. There's some categories this year where they're like top 20. When you just look at their film, what, you know, where on the defensive side have they gotten so much better? I think just collectively how well they're running to the football. They're playing with uh, really, really good effort, um, very sound fundamentally. Uh, there's been some tweaks uh, schematically from what they did a year ago. Um, but I think, you know, just the, the confidence level playing good football, uh, the first couple of games, um, and then just, you know, they, they've got some really talented players, and, you know, just I think that the, how hard they're playing um, and how well they're tackling um, has just, you know, been a been a big difference um, in how well they're playing. So you turn on the film, and, uh, you know, you watch the big play cut up, you know, both runs and passes, and there's not a lot of them. Um, and I think that's a, a credit to their coaching staff and obviously a credit to their players. Uh, that they're playing at a really high uh, level defensively right now. Okay. And, you know, it was kind of, I think it was kind of forgotten after the game on Saturday, but uh, you gave Frank the first snap at quarterback and you had some different 
Um, and I, I wanted to ask, number one, sort of what, you know, played into that decision just to plug him in for that first play. And then, you know, philosophically, right, you guys run all these – every week you kind of throw a different package out there. And I, I think the, you know, the general thought is when, you, when you're trying to do that, you're probably – going for the big play and home run and trying to create something. Is that really the philosophy behind it? Or is there, you know, more behind the, you know, looking to yes, we try to, new in every week? Yeah, we, yeah, we had some, you know, some other things that were working off of that package. Um, but the way Rockwell Armstead was running the ball, <clears throat> excuse me, and some of the things that we were creating in the passing game as well, um, you know, we didn't have to get back to that package. Um, but we always do that, especially early in games. Um, you know, me being a defense coordinator for so long, I know that when you have things that are very unique uh, that are thrown at you during a game, you've got to spend a lot of time getting those things adjusted, um, and you're not working really on the main thing anymore. You're working on the, the little, um, you know, specialty packages. So every week we have those, and uh, there's always things that come off of those things that, you know, maybe we show them in the game, maybe we don't. Um, but you know, the other things were working so well, we never got back to that package. Um, but you know, it was a good change up and, uh, obviously each week there's going to be new wrinkles to the package. Um, you know, so we can do creatively, um, you know, to create stress for defenses mentally, um, as well as how hard our kids play physically and effort wise. Okay. And so from your perspective, Hey, if you run something and Isaiah Wright gets a four or five yard gain, then, you know, that's good. You're not concerned that you didn't create a big play out of this unique look? No, because there's always a setup off of it. Sometimes the primary work, okay. sometimes it's the uh, secondary, sometimes you go to the tertiary play, um, you know, and that breaks through. Everything is a setup. Uh, you try to tell a story formationally, try to tell a story personnel-wise, and then always have compliments um, off of it to, to attack the defense and to get things set up. So uh, that's what we do every week. And, uh, you know, those creative things are just to create stress on the, you know, defensive coaching staff and the, and the players. Okay, thanks. Take one more for Coach Collins, please. We'll go, we'll go to Michael Zingron with the Temple News. Hey, Mike. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? Good. So, um... I uh, just want to ask about Rock Cole. He has four straight games with a with a hundred yards. Just how happy are you to to have basically a one hundred percent healthy Rock Cole Armstead um, heading into the the heart of your conference schedule? Yeah, he, I mean he's playing at a really high level. Um, just so proud of what he means to this organization, <clears throat> what he means to this team, this university, um, and how hard he plays and how unselfish of a player he is. Um, you know, giving of himself on special teams, giving of himself on defense, and then just running his heart out um, every single play. And then he does a tremendous job um, in pass protection. Um, and in the run game, he's the lead blocker on a lot of plays and, uh, you know, does a, does a great job. Um, you know, there's, uh, he played with a heavy heart uh, on Saturday, um, found out news of his grandmother, um, you know, being sick. And, uh, you know, he played his heart out like he always does. Um, I think there's a little more meaning uh, behind it for him on Saturday. Um, so we're all praying for her health and, uh, you know, keeping her in our thoughts um, because we love Rock so much and we want him um, to keep having success um, individually and, and for his for his teammates. So after, you know, experiencing a, a tough battle at Boston College, how much do you think an experience – like that could really help your team heading into to your remaining schedule being conference play? Well, I think one of the big things is just the, you know, the first five games, um, our guys have battled. We've learned something new in every single game. Um, and I just think the lessons that come um, from playing tough opponents um, and be put in tough, critical situations, um, help a program, help a team um, for the future. And I think, you know, I'm thankful that we've been put into some tough situations, um, you know, some that we came out on the short end, but I thought our kids have battled every single step of the way. Uh, they've learned something new um, every week collectively um, and individually um, so that we can get better and uh, use those lessons to play because our conference is, is really, really good. Um, we know the teams that we've got coming up, um, you know, especially this week, uh, are very talented, very well coached, and we have to use those lessons 
that we've learned in the first five games uh, to play at a really high level. Thank you, Jeff. Coach, thank you for your time today. We look forward to hearing from you once again next Monday.